What's up, YouTubers? It's me back again. <laughs> In today's video, we are going to be doing overhead welding. And it's not something I've been looking forward to, mainly because um, I don't really have a practice stand to do this on. So I'm going to end up having to either kneel on the ground here or sit on a very low stool. Either way, I'm probably going to catch my pants or shirt on fire or something, so we can all have a laugh at least at that. But this is a continuation of my stick welding series. This is the last video that we're going to be doing together probably with 6013. It may have a guest appearance in another video coming up, but we're pretty much going to set this aside and move on to other rods. And if you watch my other videos, you know that the whole purpose of me showing you a 6013 is essentially because I know that everyone who has a stick welder can run this. Not everyone who has a stick welder has DC and you may not be able to run some of the other rods. So I wanted to give uh, as many people out there a chance to understand what they're doing. And I know it's, this, this rod is accessible. Hell, you know, you, your father, your grandfather, or even you probably have a box of 6013 in a garage next to the welder you never use. So everybody's got it everyone has access to it so anyways what we're going to do is i welded up this janky stand here and then i welded tack welded up essentially a multiple fillet weld and i'm going to clamp this up here and then i'm going to get down on the floor or maybe a low stool if i can find one and we're going to be welding in the overhead position so let's start so let's talk a little bit about rod angle. Now, we're going to be using 332 rods to start, which are a little bit small, to be honest, to be welding quarter inch thick steel, but we're going to make it work. So rod angle wise, you want to have a slight drag angle. So this would be if we're welding from the right to the left, this would be straight in right about here. This is a slight drag angle. This is about what you want is a slight drag angle. If you push, good luck. Now with 6013, you're just going to entrap uh, flux and slag in your bead. It's not going to work. If you're at an extreme drag angle, what's going to end up happening is you're going to use the arc force of the rod. You're going to dig into the plate and then excessively reinforce where you're going to have molten metal that just kind of hangs and drips down. So you want that slight drag angle. Now from a standpoint of angle here, okay, obviously we're a little bit limited because we can't go flat up to the plate like on this guy. If you look here, we can go in this. Now you don't want to weld here. But the bottom plate obscures our angle somewhat, but we are in okay shape because the angle that we want is if anything you want to fa slightly favor the top plate more than the side. If you come in here like this and favor the side, what's going to end up happening is you're not going to attach any metal and get it to stick to the top plate. So split it and then slightly favor if anything, a top plate, and it's ever so slightly. The question comes up a lot of how should you chuck the rod in the stinger? I find that some people, myself included, depending on what I'm doing, might just do it straight out the front and then angle it in here. That can work. What you're gonna find though, depending on what you're welding, it's gonna put your hands essentially right at the point where molten metal's gonna potentially drip down. And yeah, these gloves are pretty heavy duty, but you know, you get a big enough ball of molten flux and you'll burn, you'll burn yourself pretty decent. So what I generally find will work is I put it in this to angle it out. And then I will come in here and weld like this and I will slightly feed it in. But if you look here, if I'm welding here, and it might be a little hard to see due to the angle of camera. The molten ball of flux is going to fall off. It's going to fall off here. Well, where is my stinger in my hand? Nowhere near. If I put it in here, 
with the same drag angle, my hands are now right, right where it's going to be. So this versus this I'm out of the way, okay? So that might help you from burning your hands, but welding overhead is going to be difficult at first once you get it. It's really like welding flat position. It's just that uh, you have to maintain the arc gap a little bit more. Like it takes a little bit more focus to keep the arc gap where you want it. So I'm going to set up, I'm going to run, I don't know, a couple inch weld and then we're going to take a look at it. See, I'm down here on a stool. Thought I'd be crawling on the ground to do this, huh? You were wrong. Got the machine at 85 amps. 6013, 330 second. Let's start and run a little weld. All right, so let's take a look at what I got here. Now, when you look at there, my start was pretty decent. I started moving forward too fast. The weld neck down didn't wet out, didn't deposit enough metal. And then on the toes, you also see a little bit of slag in there. Again, very common with 6013. Once I slowed it down, kept feeding it in, straightened it right out. So that's looking pretty good. I think my setting of 85 amps is close to what I'll need. If you look at the profile of it, it's about smack dab in the middle where we want it. So that looks good. So let's uh, put this back on here, clamp it down, and then weld. All right, that was running a little bit on the hot side. I could tell just by the color of the plate, the glow. I'll let that cool off, chip it off, and we'll take a look. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. Now, the start where we had here, neck down here, there we go. Pretty good there. My restart was rough. As you can see, slag entrapment on the toe, colder start. I should have started ahead of it and drug back. Again, uh, like you saw in my other video, 6013 on restarts is very unforgiving, out of position. Ran this. This turned out right here really good, a lot better. I believe I had another restart in here. That one went better, maybe not. And then all the way Travel speed picked up. If you look at that, see how it's narrower than here? Travel speed picked up. And then neck down. So what we need to improve now is I need to, at the start of the weld, go slower. I need to work on my restart here. Need to let it fill in a little bit more. This does not appear to be undercut. It's just the bead didn't wet out as, as well as it should have, so a little bit of a cold toe. And then this right here is what we're aiming for for the whole weld. That looks really good. So we're going to try and do this one step better and hopefully get a little closer to that for the whole weld, which is just going to come down to keeping a more consistent arc gap and travel speed. Now, arc gap wise, I will have arc footage in this video. It's difficult to explain in overhead the arc gap that you're aiming for. The best way I could describe it is you're actually melting off the rod 
with a slight gap. If you cram it in tight like you're welding in the flat position, what's going to end up happening is, oh, if I can get this clamp, in the flat position, if you're just like cramming, say like in this position, if you're cramming a rod in, not a whole lot will happen other than you might stick the rod. Well, when you're welding overhead, because gravity's pulling your molten puddle downwards, the arc gap you need to maintain is ever so slightly longer than it is when you're welding in the flat position because that molten metal is actually hanging down and only like surface tension or whatever is causing it to cling to the metal. And if you try and cram that rod in there, you're just going to stick it. So it's like whatever it takes to do for you to weld in the flat position, just a micro, like a millimeter, quarter millimeter more arc gap, and that should get you in the ballpark. All right. Uh, I guess I'll use a rod that's on here and then restart and go from there. You're probably seeing all them BBs and buckshots hit my knuckle, which is definitely not good. I'm going to get a pretty hot finger here pretty soon. If I catch my pants on fire while doing this shout, let me know. That went in a lot better still, quite a bit of heat. As you can tell by the orange red, it's carrying a lot of heat near the end with nowhere for it to escape. But there's not a whole lot that we can do about that. Had I turned it colder, we would have been running colder here. So to be expected, there we go, peel that off. All right, well, I'll brush this off and we'll take a look at what we got. Alrighty, quenched it a little bit just so we can get the training done in a reasonable amount of time. So let's take a look at what we got. Looking a lot better. You can tell where my restarts are right here and then right here. Could work on the restarts a little bit. We don't have any of that issue with the cold toes. It's overall like flowed out, wetted out pretty good. A little bit of a crater at the end. I just kind of popped out of it. So had I just filled that a little bit more and not just popped out of it, it probably would have solved that. But that's looking a lot better than the first time. Now, I prefer to run eighth inch rod on this thick of material rather than 332. 
My travel speed with the 332 was much slower, so I could deposit a pretty decent sized weld. This is about what an eighth inch rod would. The difference is, is that an eighth inch rod, I wouldn't have burned up like two whole rods doing this. I would have only burned up like a rod and a half or so. So um, I would recommend, you know, to start out, use 332 on this, but eighth inch goes a lot faster and you don't have to run as many rods. Yeah, so for 6013, that's looking pretty good. Um, let's do another one. I'll, I'll cool this off a little bit more and we'll do another one and then see if I can't uh, clean this up a little bit. And this time I'll get some arc footage so you guys can see what I'm seeing. All right, let's watch this. You can see a, quite a bit of a long arc there. Once I get it a little bit closer, everything starts going a little bit smoother and I'm just feeding it in. You can see too how my rod keeps bobbing up and down, a little bit inconsistent arc gap. This is really looking pretty good right here. This is what you want to aim for. So this is a little bit all over the place. It kind of straightened out right here where I'm feeding it in. The puddle's looking pretty good. Again, I'm bobbing up and down a little bit. You can tell by the light output. And that's really when you're overhead welding, the change in light output is telling you that your arc gap is inconsistent. You want to keep it to where it's the same. And again, you can see I'm bobbing up and down here. Should have been focusing a little bit more on keeping it consistent. So here you're going to see the flux is going to outrun my rod a little bit ahead of it where it's starting to drip. See how it's just, you know, out of control there. And then once I move forward a little bit, pushed a little bit more rod in. And you see how that puddle reestablished right now, right where it should be. And then everything's going a little bit better. 6013 can be pretty difficult to stay ahead of the flux. But you can see this is running perfect now. This is what you want. Well, let's take a look. Far from perfect. You can see not too bad. There's a little bit of slag on the toes on the top. If you watched in the video, every time I long arced it, it ended up humping up a little bit, like what you see there near the restart. And as soon as I tightened the arc, it smoothed out and flattened out, especially unlike the last inch like you saw in that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set up and I'm gonna do everything a little bit better on the last weld here on the backside, and I'll try and get some arc shots of it and hopefully not melt my camera so we can see what's going on and do a little bit better than that. And by a little bit better, really it just comes down to arc gap, travel speed consistent, all of that stuff. So this is a little bit out of focus, but it should still help you. Right now I'm doing pretty good with the arc gap. You can see though my travel speed forward it's a little bit inconsistent. Now one of the things I didn't realize is I forgot to clamp this uh, when I start before I started welding, so I kind of moved the plate a little bit and couldn't figure out what was going on. But yeah, you can see a little bit inconsistent, and then this right here, you can watch I start welding off on the bottom or the side plate and not the top. See that? And then I brought it back up. Now this I'm wandering all around and if you just listen to it you can hear like the arc is sounding crispy and you can almost see more spatter coming out of it. I'm still progressing at about the right rate. It's just I need to be tightening up the arc a little bit 
and focus on just being smooth. I apologize, this is a little bit out of focus, but this is really what you should be seeing. I established the arc, got it pushed in there decent, not too far. The light output, as you can see, is staying very consistent. That's telling you that your arc gap is very consistent and your travel speed is good as well. But right here is what you want to be aiming for. Well, it's time to uh, cash out 6013, I think. I pretty much covered all of the conventional welding positions with it. Probably could have done a little bit better job on the vertical up with 6013, but honestly, I've been welding with this more than I probably have in my life combined, so I kind of am ready to get to something a little bit easier. You know, no, not joking. I mean, 70, 18, 60, 10, even 60, 11 is a lot easier to work with, I find, in 60, 13. But, hey, if you got the rod and you got a welder, get out in the garage and weld with it. Do some practice or something, you know. But uh, the results, without a camera in your face, not bad. I could do better. 70, 18, much easier. And that's what we're going to be moving on to in the future. We will have a guest appearance with the 6013 in a video I'm shooting coming up where I compare all the rods as far as penetration and overall like use. So it's a kind of a great video for a general overview of all the different welding rods. Um, it's going to make a comeback. But other than that, we're going to be moving on to 7018, 6010 coming up, and I got all sorts of really cool stuff to teach you, like welding D rings and um, welding uh, hooks and on stuff. And uh, we're going to actually get into some, like, not really structural, but something with liability, something that, uh, you know, far better than just welding test plates all day. Because I get it, the reason you want to learn to weld is so you can make stuff. So now that we've made it through all of this lesson, we're definitely, or you're, you should be ready to make stuff. I know I am, but you should be too if you've been following along. So anyways, if you've got any comments, questions, concerns, whatever, leave them in the comment box. Otherwise, I appreciate you sticking around for this video series. There's still going to be more stick welding videos, just not with 6013, like I said. But anyways, thanks, and I will catch you guys around.